Well, good morning, everyone. We are live and on the air. Uh, this is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. Good to see Dr. Faye joining us already. Good to see Tenderheart joining us. Uh, David Ketterman's joining us this morning. God bless you, brother. Um, just good to see everybody. And already the comments are coming in so fast that I can't keep up with them this morning. Uh, <laughs> good to see our student, Linda Routley, uh, Anna uh uh, Tenderheart is one of our paraprofessionals. Uh, Shane Gabbard is a brother. He is scheduled for one of my shows in the near future. Good to see our board member, David Jacobs, <coughs> joining us this morning. And I just wanted to take a moment and recognize uh, a few folks. Uh, welcome and thank you for coming back to Friday Morning Conversations and watching again. This is our, our third and final session for now on this subject with Apostle Daniel Williams, uh, currently located in the sunny state of Florida. And uh, so good morning, my brother. How are you doing? I'm blessed. Beautiful morning yeah. here. Amen. And... Um, He's been uh, having some issues with allergies, and if he coughs, uh, then he coughs, and and uh, if I cough, I'll cough, and, and we, we'll get through this, and everything will be fine. But, uh, you know, we know that we are uh, not seeking the victory. We are the victors in all things, and what I like about what we're talking about, as he is, so am I, is the reality of of the mind games and the battles people go through to think about, you know, Christ. We've always had this higher uh, uh, positioning or exaltation of Jesus uh, being God uh, in the flesh. But what we didn't realize is there were so many scriptures like as he is, so am I, or so are we, uh, or like um, uh, the scriptures that say we're heirs and joint heirs or equal heirs with Jesus Christ. And that's just the positioning God gave us as sons and daughters of God. And so we really need to get past our our religious, our religious mind blocks and really embrace the fact that we are just as Jesus was God in the earth. We are God in the earth. And uh, it might be the little G and I'm OK with that. But we are God in the earth and we represent our father and so what an awesome day. Uh, I got a message from Apostle Daniel this morning said, this, this is a, an awesome day. It's going to be a great day. And I believe that. So we're going to get started this morning as we are talking about as he is. So are we. If you want to, everybody watching, you can click like, <coughs> click share, uh, and let everybody get a hold of this right from the start. Uh, otherwise, I'll give you a reminder at the end. Uh, so this is part three of our discussion on the concept as he is so are we or so am i and the thing about it is we as we talked about last week we are those who as sons and daughters of god are led by holy spirit and in doing that we're always coming face to face with certain truth decisions now people would say doctrinal decisions but not doctrinal decisions but truth decisions because i want to tell you doctrine is always debated but once <laughs> truth is realized jesus said truth will make you free so truth is not debatable truth decisions concerning uh, what what has been <laughs> unveiled to us and then we attempt to wrap our natural thinking around it so that we can be transformed in our thinking. So before we get into uh, scripture this morning, Apostle, uh, how can we prove, and I, I should have forwarded you this question, I didn't, <laughs> how can we prove that as he is, so are we, uh, it is the ultimate truth of who we are as opposed to who we once thought we were based on a natural perspective? Oh, hallelujah. That's, uh, that's what, five hours to answer, maybe? Um, <laughs> that's a huge, huge question. I, I think the, what, it, what happens is it proves out in our lives as, as that revelation becomes more real to us. Mm -hmm. On the inside, it just automatically begins to manifest uh, the difference, of course, between God the Father and us, he's the creator, we're the created. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, we're created in his reflection, in his image, his likeness. And I, I, what I've seen in my own life, particularly uh, over the 38 years of basically the ministry part of it, mm -hmm. I have, um, he, that's become more real to me. 
that 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 I'm so connected with him that uh, uh, it, it's kind of like a a shaded area between one and the other. It, it, it's hard to tell where he begins and where I leave off and where That's I good. begin and he leaves off is because it, it, it's begin it, it's merging or it's like um, you know you make a good stew. And you put all the substance in that stew, and, and, and it begins to meld together. All the flavors and everything becomes one flavor. And that's what, what that process happens. And uh, I, I just, I, I mean, I wake up in the morning, and I know I don't have to pray God down because I know he's in here. I don't have to fast to uh, get his attention because I always have it. And it, it's just a place of... Um, I don't know, Paul said that he knew in whom he had believed. And I believe what was happening with him is that he believed it to begin with, which uh, is the doorway in, but the, yeah. knowing, the knowing of him is the experiential part. And the more we experience him, the more real that uh, as he is, so are we in this world becomes. Amen. Amen. And, you know, this is really uh, a, an important concept, but it's also, uh, as I said earlier, a, bit a difficult concept for people to grasp. But I love what you said that from the inside out. We come to the place where we almost don't know, notice the difference anymore. And, and we've so spiritualized God, which he is spiritual and we're spiritual. He is spirit. We're spirit. But we so spiritualize that in a a mystical way because uh, there's mystical is a word that that has two sides, <laughs> so it's not just used in you know like new age and things, but even in Christendom, it, it's so we made it so mystical that we just can't see ourselves in that same light. But to really experience God and to Amen. really experience the as He is, so am I concept you really do have to embrace the fact that you are just like him because think about it just because mom and daddy got together in the season <laughs> went and nine months later you were birthed doesn't mean that's a creation of humanity god designed everything god is in and a part of everything that has to do with us and so you know let's face it all things that are come out of the heavens of the the the, the uh, eternal christ everything that is uh comes from god comes from the supernatural and and so uh what we're doing today uh that we have a lot of scriptures to attempt to cover but but to <laughs> to, to just to start with uh, one of the scriptures you sent me that I, I actually also had the same one, and uh, it is First John two verse twenty. And I want to read this today uh, because this is so powerful. You, you can read it from the Amplified, and also also read it from the the Passion translation. But the Amplified says, "But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specifically gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit." And all of you, no, all of you can mean everything about you, but all of you can also mean all of you that uh, John was talking to. Now, all of you know the truth because the teacher uh, 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 illuminates our minds and guards us from error. Now, when we read this in, in its totality, we see that he really focuses on the individual that he teaches us. And he doesn't just teach us from, from uh, the scriptures, but he teaches us by Holy Spirit through ministers and through other people. But, uh, but it's so important that we understand he illuminates our minds. And that's what happened in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, he, or 3. He illuminated it with his mind. Uh, the Passion Translation says, but the Holy One has anointed you and you all know the truth. And I've said this before, this could actually read, you have the capacity to know all things. And the reality is, Apostle Daniel, as sons and daughters of God, who are the creation of the creator, as you so beautifully stated, we are led by the mind of God and we have the ability to know everything that is in the Father's mind. And the truth is, God, I want everybody to hear this, God, Father God does not keep secrets from his creation. He shares his mind with us. So I want to hear what you have to say about that scripture, uh, but... 
but just just any thoughts or anywhere you want to go with that. Yeah, I uh, that one. That, I think I I looked it up yesterday or the day before because the, the mirrored um, translation. I, I love that, but this this just spoke to me because uh, in um, I believe it is in uh, Philippians two thirteen, and I I'm just going to kind of quote this a little bit combination of Amplified, King James, and maybe a few other translations put in there too. He said that he's all the while working in us both to will and to work for his good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight, but he's he's creating in us, whether you know it or not, the desire to fulfill his will and his purpose. It's, um, it's something that you don't have to try to figure out with your mind uh, with mentally ascend to try to figure out how this is working because he's doing it in the, in the, the spiritual side of us, which uh, is like you said, we are awakening to the spirit, the supernatural side of it. And it's becoming more natural to us because we're, we're adopting the full mind of Christ. And uh, we know what that is as uh, uh what Jesus was said about him in Philippians chapter two, let this mind be in you also. Mm-hmm. Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So to be like him. And um, that's the way I, I mean, that's the way I see it is that I know um, Dr. Bill, I know the Lord is working in me, whether I really know it or not, because yes. uh, I can, I can go to sleep and get up the next day I know what David said. He said, "Your medita- my meditation is your word. That's relationship with the Lord. But he'd lay, he'd lay down and go to sleep and wake up and the word would be speaking to him. That's mm-hmm. not necessarily the Bible, you know, uh, quoting all the scripture in front of you. But his, his word, the essence of who he really is, is so alive on the inside that you get up fresh in the morning and all of a sudden, I mean, the Lord's already doing something. And that tells me that God is doing this in us without us really trying to make a um, like a works type type effort to get it to happen. It's a matter of just saying, "Okay, Lord, here I am. I totally believe you, like Paul said, and I know you're working in me because I can see the difference myself. Bishop, I see the difference in myself, the, the, it's awesome because we, we continually change uh, daily yeah. from moment to moment. We're taking on the, the express image of his person. And the reason why is that his seed is within us. And, of course, the law of Genesis, we preached it many different ways. Uh, per, uh, every seed produces after its own kind. So uh, we are born of an incorruptible seed by the by the word of God, not uh, not the will of man or the, or the will of flesh, and this right. this the supernatural DNA uh, that I'm made up of of my father is manifesting, and it's it it's becoming natural. I believe that's probably why the scripture says that He will give you the tongue of the learn. How does that happen? It's happening on the inside, and as we mm-hmm. yield to what's in the inside of us, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it manifests on the outside in our lives. People can see it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I just posted the uh, the the First John two twenty in the Mirror Bible. <coughs> it says, "The Christ anointing within you <coughs> is evidence that you echo what you carry." The Holy wow. Spirit has made him tangible in your life, and you see clearly. Now, why many writings still uh, talk about <coughs> Christ uh, not only in us, but us in Christ, is because in reality, the intention was that as we were created in the beginning of time, just like our Father, and came through the earth earth uh, experience channel and had this this. Uh, um, uh, distorted mindset of who we were. The reality is, is that God really does 
uh, show us that he raised up at the cross. He brought our minds back together. This was an opportunity for everyone that thought with a separation mindset or a duality mindset. Mm -hmm. This was an opportunity for us to come back into agreement with God's mind. <laughs> and, and he shows us this one new man, and we call that the many-membered body of the one. So it really doesn't matter to me if if you see me or you see Christ, you're seeing the same thing, okay? Now, on my worst day, Apostle, uh, if I give <laughs> a bad representation of who people really think that Christ is, you know, things happen. I'm not proud of it, but the reality is I still have to operate in the Christ mind. So we allow no shame. We allow no condemnation, but we do make corrections along the way. And, you know, one of the passages that uh, we're going to talk about that you sent me is uh, Galatians 5, 22 uh, through 25. And, you know, this passage talks about the fruit of the spirit. But you know what is before that? It's a passage talking about the fruit of the flesh or the works right. of the flesh. And yes. the works of the flesh are titled works of the flesh because you have to work to try to do them and fail at them. But the fruit of the spirit is always success. And I love this because he says the fruit of the spirit is love. And notice that love is in the singular expression. It's not a, a, a plural expression because I believe the fruit of the spirit really is love because God is love. Absolutely. But out of love flows peace, long suffering, goodness, uh, kindness, faithfulness. Uh, gentleness uh, or meekness or self-control. And he says against such there is no law because uh, really what he's saying uh, in one um, uh, commentary that there was no conflict with Jewish laws. In other words, you can go ahead and love. That doesn't have a conflict with Jewish laws. Now there is an element of judgment under Jewish law, but there's not an, an element of I'm walking in love. And so all of these things, he says, um, he goes on and says, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And I quoted that so much throughout my life that if we're going to live in the spirit, if that's who we are, if that's who we're created to be, let's also walk in the same manner. And the, the reality is, yes, David Ketterman, they're, they're attributes of the spirit. That's another way to put it. Amen. Uh, but but see that the flesh has been crucified because the flesh is a representation of the fallen mindset of man. And that has been crucified. That has been dealt with. And the, the good news is I no longer have to walk in that. So yeah. I can walk in what he's told me that I can walk in. And that's such a beautiful thing. Amen. Yes. We, he said, I like Paul. He said, consider yourself dead indeed, but alive mm. unto Christ. You know, there, there's, a, there's a value of that if you'll, if you'll <laughs> process that with your thinking a little bit and consider instead of considering, oh, I just, I'm, um, I'm struggling, I'm having a problem, please pray for yeah, me, maybe yeah. I'll get free. He said, consider this, that you are dead indeed, but you are alive unto Christ. You are alive unto the anointing of the anointed one, the Christ that's in you, his life yeah. that is in you. You are alive to that. And it, it, it's an acknowledgement. I, I find this, Dr. Bildum, that as I continue to acknowledge this in my life, it becomes even more real to me. And it's easier to exhibit something that's real to you. If you don't oh, yeah. think it's real, it's hard to do that. So oh, yeah. you exhibit what becomes so vitally real to you, it becomes your norm. So no wonder Paul had the statements he made about Jesus. He said, you know, I'm crucified with Christ. It's not me anymore that lives. It's Christ that's in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by not my faith, but by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I, I am just, I, I, I'm, I'm separated from all of that because of what Jesus did. It's a reality to me. And my yeah. life that I live is not just me. It's the Christ that's in me. And it, it's a conscious uh no wonder the scripture says we are we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. When I think about that, 
I just say, hey, you know, I'm more spiritually minded than I am naturally minded. I've heard people say, hey, some people are so spiritually minded, they ain't no earthly good. I don't know how that can fit in anywhere in life because no, the more spiritually minded, the more I've, I'm awakened and I lean towards what he says about me, the more the fruit of love, which is singular, like you said, and then mm -hmm. the manifestation of the aspects of that love are visualized. They are seen, Christ in me, the hope of glory, because I, it's become my, my uh, identification of who I am. It has actually become my trademark. I'd never have said that before, but it's become my new trademark. Uh, you know, every you got a trademark for different things that are invented. This is a yeah. trademark uh, craftsman or whatever, and this is what we produce. We got a trademark that we created in the likeness and the image of our daddy, our father, Papa God, and uh, his DNA is within us, and it's we are developing. I like to tell people uh, this, I am becoming, I am mm -hmm. becoming. What do you tell somebody? Oh, you're becoming. That means you are, you are, you're a metamorphosis. You are changing. You are taking mm -hmm. on a whole new appearance. And the only way you can take on this new appearance, which really is an old appearance that we haven't woke up to, but the yeah, only way yeah. to do that is to, it, like the scripture says, awake to righteousness and sin not. What does that mean? Wake up to the fact that he's made you righteous and you won't practice those things you used to practice because it, it, it will be the Christ that's in you that will, he will empower you and give you the ability to look like him, to look mm -hmm. like him. So as Jesus was the express or I could, I'd like to say the exact replica, the exact image. You look at him, you couldn't tell any difference from looking at him and walking in this earth suit he was in as a man. But yet God, I tell you what, Bishop, we are moving into a, this because we're growing in this. We're growing in grace. Yes. We're growing in knowledge. We're moving into the place that people at one time, they're going to say, you know, I just can't tell the difference between the bishop, Doctor Bill. I he, he acts so much like what I what I've read and what I've heard about Jesus that uh, is 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 he Jesus? And you, <laughs> well, that's Christ in you is beginning to manifest in the earth. And yeah. we we know the Scripture says the whole earth is going through birth pains. And those birth pains, there's a little reprieve in between pains. But those birth pains are happening. And because even the earth, the creation we look at, is, is really looking for us to manifest Jesus in the earth. Mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing to me when I think about that. Because I know the creation, Dr. Bill, has a voice. The creation says you have no excuse to not believe what I'm saying is true because this stuff didn't happen all by itself. And this creation yeah. speaks to us every morning, whether you, whether you read your Bible in the morning and say, oh, brother, you better read that Bible for three hours in the morning. And I'll tell you what, if you don't pray for an hour for everybody to get saved, they're all going to hell and their blood's going to be on you. Uh, now, <laughs> wait a minute. That, that's not true. You see, there's how can that be what the scripture calls a labor of rest in mm -hmm. Hebrews, where he says we, we finish our works, our efforts of trying to become something. We enter into the fact that we are something and we begin to rest in Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now, I got to doing a little preaching because my voice let me do that. <laughs> Thank right. God. But but that's. That's um, to me, it, it's it's different levels that we graduate. And a person, you should not be, feel bad about yourself if you're operating in one area of visibility, and 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 you they see Christ in you, and they say, yeah, I see a I see a little bit of Christ in that person. But that level of visibility on the outside will come greater and more grand and spectacular as the level of visibility on the inside changes, then so likewise, 
it'll be seen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good. Well, that's I'm going to ta- let you take it now. <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, Chaplain uh, Shane Gabbert says, um, and I put that up on the screen, uh, so spiritually minded, uh, earthly good is the result. Amen. And so being spiritually minded, <laughs> that's the result, is is that we, we become <coughs> so spiritually minded that we actually are earthly good. We are good for those in this earth realm. And um, uh, I, I pulled up uh, Galatians 2.20 from the <coughs> Mirror Bible, and I haven't done this for a long time, regularly uh, read from the Mirror Bible, but, but it says spirit effortlessly bears the rich harvest of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, integrity, gentleness, and self-control. All these individually reveal the irresistible attraction (laughs) of the inner life of our design. And you're right in what you said, that we really are not coming into something (coughs) new. We are actually coming back to our origin, the origin of who we are. And, you know, that's what I love about what we're talking about, because Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I think... uh, uh, that's one of the scriptures we have on the, the plate for today. Yes, it is. Um, and, and and he goes on to say, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But, you know, here's the downside of that scripture is that we have often thought it was robbery or irreverent to be equal with the eternal Christ when Father God made us equal with the eternal Christ. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And and we quoted it that way, but it actually reads, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So yes. how does it, so when we talk about the heart, we need to understand that when we talk about the physical the heart, we need to remove the image of the physical heart because heart yeah. here really is translated as our awareness or our thinking, our mind. And so as we think in our mind, because you don't think in your heart, you think in your mind. So as you think, so how do you see? Your, so if you see yourself as way below the equality that God has given you with Jesus Christ, then you miss the mark. But when you see yourself above or better than Christ, you miss the mark. When you see yourself as Christ, then you fall into the category of as you think in your mind, in your soul. That's exactly who you are. So it's not who you're going to become. It's who you are. And this is one of the greatest downsides to humanity is we're always trying to become something or someone that we already are. And who we are is the creation of the creator. And, you know, you sent me a note, and I want to just mention this so, so that you can fly in whatever direction you want to with this. You said there's two two parts. There's, there's A, the spirit realm, the realm of the spirit, the supernatural realm, and B, there's the realm of the flesh or the, 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 the natural realm. And so many times we we fail to see part A, but we focus so big on part B that we really miss out on part A altogether. And so I, I'd like you to talk about that and um, uh, just, just take us wherever you want to, Apostle. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Yes, I, the realm of the spirit, spiritual realm, the realm of the flesh, the natural realm. Mm-hmm. Well, I was thinking that I took only two, two verses here because there's so much collective. Uh, you know, you can read uh, all of uh, Ephesians 1 and all of Ephesians 2, and you can even get a uh, greater uh, understanding of it. But it took two verses. Right. And the last verse, it says, the body, we, we are the body of Christ, the fullness. I like that, the fullness Man, that's that, that's to the brim and overflowing. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And then mm-hmm. Ephesians 2, 6, it says he's raised us up together and made us set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now, the way I used to think about that, uh, Bishop, was that, yeah, now how is this, Lord? You know, uh, heaven's a billion, trillion, trillion, quadzillion miles away. It's infinitely the distance. We can't measure it. And I'm seat, seated way, way out yonder in this, you know, and I'm also here. Now, uh, that's kind of a funny thing to way, way to think about it. But when you realize 
that heaven ain't necessarily above you. Heaven is right here on a horizontal uh-huh. thing that, uh, that you literally, because of what Jesus did and you recognizing that, that fact that it is finished, you are seated supernaturally. Uh, the seat reminds me of authority because uh, when you're setting, Jesus is, you know, you got him pictured sitting on a throne ruling. So yeah, you're, se- yeah. you're seated. You're not working hard. You're running things. You're in a place, a uh, position of ruling and reigning in life by one Christ Jesus. But you're also on this earth. But all of those yeah. verses indicate that we have been raised up. We've been put in a position far above all things. I mean, you know, principalities, powers, rules, all of that stuff. We're far above that. So the only way, Bishop, that can be is that we operate in two positions at the same time. Now, God is omnipresent. Uh, Let me just blow your mind. If God is omnipresent and he's spirit and I am he that is joined to the to the Father, to the Lord is one spirit, you're omnipresent in that sense of the word, whether you believe it or not. So if I'm omnipresent in God where I live and move and have my being, then I not only I have this earth realm so that uh, this earth suit allows me to operate in the earth realm, but also have a heavenly position in him and an omnipresent uh, position in him operating in the realm of the spirit. So yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, uh, ne- I don't necessarily need to. He said, who shall ascend up and, and try to get the gifts to come down? He already, he already came down here and gave you those gifts, paraphrase. So you don't yeah, have yeah. to go upward. You don't have to go downward. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is be right here. And what you do is you turn inward. Inward, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, Mm -hmm. this is how I define that. Uh, Maybe different definitions could apply to this. But the kingdom of God that is within me is king dominion. God's government is theocracy. It's Mm -hmm. a sovereign government that rules over any other, whatever kind of government you might be able to think of, it rules over all those governments. So he said, in Christ Jesus, you will rule and reign in where? Life, in the natural yeah, realm. Yeah, yeah. You will reign as the, from, the, from the seat of authority from the supernatural realm. You will reign in the natural realm. And no wonder... No wonder the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. No wonder that the earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea. And and that's two part, Bishop, in my thinking. I see us as earthen vessels, as ones that hold the embodiment of who he is. So we will be filled with his glory as the waters cover the sea. But you know what? He created this planet. And he created it to be inhabited. There's a lot of people today that are saying, God's going to just wipe out the planet and ain't going to exist anymore. You know what I got to say to that? I won't say it like I normally do, but that's (laughs) not going to happen. That's not going to happen. He said, the world is without end. He says it in two different scripture uh, references. So our position in Christ As we come to the full acknowledgement and the realization and the veil of our understanding opens wide and we begin to see this, we're going to see what uh, the book of Acts talked about. I'll clear my throat. What the book of Acts talks about, he said that there will be a time of restoration of the Mm -hmm. gifts that are going to happen in the body of Christ. And uh, we are going to begin to move into a, uh, to a position because it, it, it's always been that way and now we're recognizing it. We're going to move mm-hmm. into a position where Jesus said, hey, listen, guys, you've seen me. You've seen the Father, the works that I do. Whew, glory. The works that I do shall you do and greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. 
You know, Jesus mm-hmm. has duplicated himself multiple times. The Lord was in one place at one time ministering to one crowd of people, but he has duplicated himself in his body, which is us, to perform the very same things in thousands of different places at the same time. That is the greater, that's part of the greater things that are going to happen in the earth. And that all happening, Bishop, because we are beginning to see. We have, we yes. have we've, we've lived in a light, uh, we've had obscurity, kind of a dimly lit revelation, and we've had a work mentality that if I just work hard enough, oh, yeah, Jesus, yeah. If, if I just hurt myself, I'm going to become a Catholic, put rocks in my shoes and do penance. If I just mm-hmm. hurt my, and I'm not saying that to hurt nobody, but if, if I do that enough, yeah, maybe God will do something. No, he's going to do what he said, and he's going to going to use uh, us, his the, the expression of, of his likeness, the expression mm-hmm. of his likeness. He's going to use us in the earth to show those that are walking in darkness that don't know this, so they can step out of darkness into his marvelous light. Talk Amen. about talk about evangelism we've we've did evangelism i used to go on the street and you know and we have to convince people to say a prayer but talk about evangelism without no convincing at all just simply they see and they come you know know what they did with jesus they heard and they seen and they followed him by with multitudes of people because he expressed visibly Without shame, you see me, you see the Father, the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ is being raised up. And this ministry, Bill, this ministry, what God has put in you, the Lord says this to you, son, I'm using you in this way to open the eyes of my people so that they may really, truly know me Mm. and the power of my resurrection. Not only my resurrection, the Lord says, but my resurrection that lives within you. Mm. Amen. Go ahead, Mm. Bishop. Mm. (laughs) You know, I want to say real quickly, we have... um, we have South Africa watching this morning. We have Spain watching this morning. Last night we had Kenya, East Africa watching. Um, we, we really are hearing from all over the world uh, throughout a week of, of broadcast, four times a week. I, I, I want to say this, that here's my position on this whole matter. Uh, that, uh, And I know that there are people uh, that teach on Facebook, no discredit to them. <coughs> Uh, I, I don't, I will not debate. I will not be confrontational about this, but I'll say we have people that are teaching that we are God. We are not like God or as God, but we are God. They're teaching. We don't need the Bible anymore. Uh, they're, they're teaching that we don't need uh, uh, teachers anymore. But I want to say, I want to say this, that we are not God, not the capital G God. He is my father. He yes. is my creator, daddy. But yes. we are as God, as <laughs> yeah. God, the Hebrew says, the lowercase g. Yeah. In other yeah. words, we are just like the Son. We are just like Jesus Christ. Because the Bible, once again, is crystal clear that we are an equal heir or a joint heir with Christ. And there's a lot of other scriptures. Now, Correct. just as just as 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, he <clears throat> that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Uh, the King James says he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Uh, so, you know, I, I, that's that's what I believe. OK, now. Now, second of all, what I believe is that um, that because we are as God, we are created to be to reflect God that I can do whatever God does because I reflect him. I am his uh, representation yes. or his expression in this earth realm. <laughs> And one of the reasons we, and as far as the Bible goes, let me just say this. I'm a Bible college professor. 
don't don't tell me we don't need the Bible. I don't want nobody <laughs> influencing my students saying we don't need the Bible because the fact is I need the Bible. And one of the reasons we're doing that is because the Bible is so misunderstood uh, that that when people uh, uh, throw it away, it's because they can't seem to understand it. They can't seem to get all of it. And I really believe that. So I can't throw it away because we have not yet fully understood the scriptures. So we need to pursue the scriptures. And for me, I teach biblical interpretation. I teach how to actually translate or interpret scripture so that you can understand it. So you got to look at the audience that was being spoken to. You got to look at the time period that the century it was being written in. For example, these are just general things we ought to know. We ought to know that Joshua died about 1245 BC. We ought to know that the city of Babylon was destroyed about 539 BC. We ought to know that uh, Jerusalem, uh, the Temple of Jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70. We really ought to know that. And we ought to know that everything that was said in the Bible for us is done. It is finished. It's over with. Jesus even <laughs> announced it's finished. So I need the scriptures. And my students need to understand the scriptures. And, you know, our paraprofessionals actually <clears throat> take uh, classes in our college. We have uh, over 160 students right now worldwide in many countries. And I'm just saying this because I really get tired of hearing that we don't need the Bible. We don't need the scriptures. I need the scriptures. And as far as teachers, apostle, we need teachers who oh, have God. labored and studied and broken some things down and understand. Because if you talk about we only need to hear the voice of Holy Spirit, we don't need any teachers. What do you think is happening when people really do get a hold of an understanding of scriptures and they're speaking to you? It is the exact same thing as God speaking to you. It is Holy Spirit speaking to you because he who is joined to the Lord, not by my choice, but by God's choice, have become one spirit with him. And that's what the scriptures say to us. And in, in, we're not going to, I don't have it today. We're not going to read it, but Ephesians uh, 1 verse 4 in the Passion Translation says that, <clears throat> that when God created us, he chose us and he joined us to himself. So we are joined to the Father. You can like it, you can not like it, but you can't change it, you can't undo it, you can't make it any different because that's exactly the way it is. So it's time to embrace <clears throat> as he is, so are we in this world. And um, let me read just one uh, uh uh, verse, uh, see, I didn't get it from the Passion Translation. That's okay. We were talking about Romans 5. Um, uh, we were, you, you quoted something from Romans 5, 17 that, that says that, that, um, uh, that we reign in life through yes. the one. Here's what the, mess, the Mirror Bible says. If spiritual death saw the gap in one sin and grabbed the opportunity to dominate mankind because of one person, how much more we now seize the advantage to reign in righteousness in this life through that one act of Christ who declared us innocent by his grace. Grace is out of all proportion and superiority to the transgression. Now, here's the thing. When I first, I travel through the Pentecostal movement I've traveled through the, the, the word movement, the, the faith movement, then the combination of the word of faith movement, the kingdom movement. I got into the grace movement and the unconditional love movement. And I really don't know if I'm in a movement right now, except the movement of <laughs> Holy Spirit within me. Okay. Oh, because when I started teaching grace unconditionally, yeah. here's what I did. I started seeing that if we sin or we do the things that we shouldn't do because of our mistaken identity, then that's okay. Well, let me just say that it's not okay. All right. right. I mean, it, it, it's, it's okay in that Father God still loves you unconditionally, <clears throat> but it's not okay because it's a lack of moral responsibility. So when I started teaching grace with moral responsibility, then I kind of got shunned by the grace people. And so when I teach unconditional love and then people say, well, yeah, I love you unconditionally, but I don't like what you teach. So I'm going to block you. Then we see that unconditional love is not working. Well, all of it is due to a improper mindset of who God is, who you are, who I am, even in my faults, even if I don't teach it exactly like you like it. Amen. 
right. but still the representation of God. And we're all coming to a goal, a place where we're rising up. You quoted it from Ephesians 1, 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Uh, I'll just read one scripture and turn it to you. The Passion Translation <laughs> of that same thing says, and now we, his church, are his body on the earth, and that which fills him who is being filled by it. So we are being filled, and yet we are filled. It is finished, and we're walking out that which is finished. So it's a beautiful life. Isn't that something? I'm telling you what, you went off there, Dr. Bill. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It, it's a balance. It really is a balance. It is. It's, it's not a not a, a self-help work type, oh, try to do it. No, but it's a balance as we yield to the truth. The scripture just simply says you will know the truth. That don't mean huh. just have information, but this information will come re become relationship. Come you on. will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now, that, that's a key thing when it comes to the preaching of the good news is that if we are really preaching the good news at least closer uh, to what it was intended to be to begin with, uh -huh. if we're preaching the good news, <clears throat> and that's happening little by little, it, it will bring people more freedom, not freedom to do wrong, but they'll find out there's a freedom to do right. Mm -hmm. They'll find out that they, there's so much, so much of God living in you that, that how can you do something that God wouldn't do because he's in you and you're one with him. See, the, you were very clear about it. The word, and I, I'm going to refer to that as the logos, the word yeah. and the spirit mm -hmm. agree. Mm -hmm. There's no conflict. The only conflict that we have between the Logos and the Spirit is our perception of what is re reality. It's our revelation of what is actually written and how does it apply. Now, the Lord has been really working in my life to, to remove formula, uh, formula type thinking. That's Do good. one, two, three, four, and five will happen. Well, now, if that happens, should we add a couple more steps so something else will happen? Or do we just take this word that's here and say, Holy Spirit, and don't, I, I always look up, it's just the way I do it. But okay. look, look, look inside. Holy Spirit, I'm one with you. We are one. Mm -hmm. Reveal this logos, this 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 plumb line that you had recorded for us reveal how this applies to our life and then do what Jesus said. He said, there's things that that you cannot bear right now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will reveal those things to you. Now, there are things in the Bible that are not that, that, that there are things in your life that are not written in the Bible, such as um, the spirit of God inside you, because. You hear the voice of God, sons of God, led by the Spirit of God, uh, and and He speaks inside you and says, "I want you to, I want you to just go stand by the by your mailbox, just stand there." And you're mm -hmm. thinking in your head, "Why in the world would I want to go stand by the mailbox?" And neighbors will think I'm crazy. Well, yeah. some of them might think you're crazy. That's possible. <laughs> uh, anyway, go stand by the mailbox. So you go out there because you are, a, you are led by the Spirit of God. And this is not a work. This is not, I'm trying to get God to love me more by doing this. This is a natural response. See, in relationship, when you, have, when you really have intimacy relationship with the Lord, you don't do mm -hmm. things out of uh, that you have to. You do, uh, or uh, you do them because you respond. You mm -hmm. see, it, love responds to love 
Uh, Romans 5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit that's been given to you. Love responds to love. God is the full embodiment of love. Holy Spirit, him, Christ in me, the hope of glory is love inside responding to love everywhere. And because God is, is omnipresent. So his love, it, it, it just, it's just a, a simple response Lord, you know, I love you so much. You have set me free. You have made me realize I'm free. I, I don't have to drink a case of beer a day anymore, Bishop. I, I, I don't have to drink uh, three or four days in a row. I don't have to do that anymore. I, I don't have to go out and do some of the other things I did anymore. I just don't have to. Right. I, I mean, I, it isn't because somebody's saying you, you better not do it or you're going to get smashed like a bug. No, it's I don't have to do it because I got somebody inside me that has changed me. And now I, I've, I've got the character of God that's been infused in my own character because I've taken the good, exceeding and precious promises and I've, I've, I've allowed them to change me. And I've become a partaker now yes. of his divine nature. Now, yes. I think if we just, if we even get that little nugget out of this too today, is that we are the body of Christ. We are partakers of his divine nature. That is yes. who you are. You are a partaker yes. of that today. Go ahead, Bishop. Yeah, and, and that means that we are his divine nature. We are that expression. <laughs> you know, my, when we were talking about the Bible, uh, my wife says that Dr. Fay, who is my wife and the managing director for World Bible School University, uh, says too many are, uh, many are too lazy when it comes to study and get the true meanings. They would rather not even bother with it. And the fact is we teach our students to study. And study is not a labor. <laughs> study is a joy. Study is yes. a joy to uncover the scriptures. Uh, Elizabeth uh, Thromset from the UK is watching today. and She watches pretty uh, our shows pretty regular. And she said this. She said that uh, there is a lot missing from the Bible. And that is so true. There were books that were left out we we are we have some courses coming up in our master and doctor programs on the the lost books of the bible uh the books of eden uh the the book of thomas uh we have some things that just weren't included that we feel like are relevant <coughs> or are important for people to know but what the biggest thing that's missing from scriptures is all of us read our modern english translations of the bible and our Bibles were not written in the English language using an English <laughs> dictionary to define it. So right. that means then we must study. And, you know, the Bible says to study to show yourself approved, which has nothing to do with the work of studying. It means to value your time in the scriptures more than anything. And so we place value on that. And you're right, Apostle. We are uh, the divine nature of God. We express the divine nature of God. So, so I think what we might uh, tell people today, uh, one of the things at least, in, in addition to what you just said, is that if you're having your worst day ever, I'm not saying there's not going to be consequences to your actions. I'm not going to say that you don't need to be responsible for your actions. What I'm saying is that if you're having your worst day ever, remind yourself that you are the divine nature of God. You are the divine expression of God in this earth realm. And so if what you may have done, you know, for me, uh, Apostle, I have a whole different perspective on drinking than maybe someone else. I've never tasted a drop of alcohol in my life. Never so done nice. drugs in my life. Uh, there's a lot of things I've never done because I was so shielded and so so had the 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 the, the magnifying glass on my life most of my life in a denominational setting. Uh, there's just things I've never done, but that doesn't mean that God loves me more or God loves me less than the person. You know, I counseled a per pastor one time. He said, "I drink a case of beer every day. What should I do?" Now, this is a full-time pastor. And I, my <laughs> advice to him was, I said, "I see you many times coming out of the grocery store with a case of beer. My advice to you is quit drinking or stop being in the ministry for now till you get this problem taken care of." I mean, I didn't mean no offense, and I don't mean that offense to anybody. If you're a person who takes a drink, God loves you. 
I'm not saying at some point your 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 drinking cannot get out of control and you may uh, end up doing something publicly that will disgrace you or your family or cause you to to do something that would be a violent that I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that 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 God loves you in spite of the lack of moral responsibility. And so, you know, I, I think it's important. One of, one of our uh, uh, viewers today, uh, I'm trying to find this, said, um, uh, let, let me just grab this right quickly, um, because I think it's important. He said, our father is moral, therefore we must be moral. And I, I think that's really true. I think it's the way God thinks. So, you know, I don't mean no offense in any of my shows, uh, Apostle. I've had so many people uh, on occasion get mad at me uh, because, uh, yeah. And, and Elizabeth says there is only one sin, not knowing that you are a, a Christ. It's all identity. And I think that's true. Sin, again, in the Greek is defined mistaken identity. And I think there's just certain basics we have to know to get a proper perspective of Scripture. Now, here's something before I, I, I give it to you to close. Uh, <laughs> do we, do, uh, um, let, me, let me get this right. Um, when we talk about identity and knowing who we are, it's very important that we, and I, I, I want to tell everybody, I don't, I don't necessarily want anybody to agree or disagree, I'm going to say this, that uh, I question the Scriptures. And I teach my students to question the scriptures for the simple reason that when you're reading an English translation, all right, and it doesn't comply with the rule of thumb, the proper hermeneutical uh, lens for all scripture interpretation, which is God's love. And if it doesn't line up to that, you absolutely must question it. Go back to the to the drawing board, so to speak, and find out what it's really saying. It's okay to question our modern Bibles, but don't throw them away. Understand them. We need to understand the scriptures. I didn't mean to get off on something, but please, please go ahead. <laughs> Amen. I, I appreciate that, too, because it, there is, that's true. Um because if you're uh, like a person that plays Roman roulette with the Bible, uh -huh. you're, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, I heard, I'm going to see if I can say this right because it's kind of funny. You know, somebody opens up the Bible and the scripture says, Judas went and hung himself. Uh -huh. well, and then he opens it up again and he put, puts his finger on the page. Uh, Go thou and do likewise. Then he opens a page again, puts his finger on there. What thou doest, do quickly. So Jesus went and hung himself. Go and do likewise and do it quickly. If you play Roman roulette with the scripture, you're going <laughs> to you're going to end up definitely getting the wrong. Uh, you're going to the information is going to be like scrambled eggs. Come on. And, uh, you know, God wants to unscramble our eggs. I, I tell people that. He wants to unscramble your eggs, and he can really do that. But you, you, the Bible is a definitely inspired, God-breathed in its original state. Yeah. Man have touched it, so there's some, there's some things that you really have to research to get the real meaning of it. Absolutely. But if, if you, uh, you, you're established in righteousness, you know the character of, of the Lord, and that, it, that it's been imputed to you, you have his uh, character, has been implanted in you, and you're one with him, then you, you study uh, with the mind of Christ, with his uh, character that's already in you, right. which is right. love, the embodiment of love, which is displayed in, you know, Joy, peace, gentleness, long suffering, goodness, meekness, all those things are, 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 are how that love is displayed. But, but because you have that inside you, living Come in on. you, you, when you read the scripture, you say, Lord, uh, that doesn't seem to apply the way I'm seeing it as I'm reading it. So show me because you are the spirit of truth, show me the correct application of that so that yeah. I, can, I can receive the revelation that you want me to have from it. That is very important because it's been, because it's been uh, misunderstood, 
uh, due to mental uh, 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 oh, um, intellect of the, just the mind. It has been misunderstood. We've got lots of doctrines that are out there that really uh, need to be kind of swept under the carpet because uh, all they're doing is creating um, uh, confusion and and fear in people's lives like, oh, God's going to get you. Uh, California is going to be in the middle of the ocean in five days. Well, come on. You know, we can, we can preach that kind of stuff and produce fear, but yet the scripture says God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. So if he hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but a love power and a sound mind, and his word is to exhort, to edify and comfort, then anything that gets out of, out of that uh, rhythm of scripture and revelation of him, you, you, you've got to kind of put that on the back burner and say, Lord, will you really show me what in the world this means so that I'm not uh, in a place where I'm playing Roman roulette with the scripture and getting myself into trouble? That's God is not, folks. One, mm. There's something he's not. He is not the author of confusion, but peace. He, he, does, he, he isn't about making us more confused when we come to the table and we begin to digest the good things that the Lord has placed in front of us. He do, he's not about uh, we leaving this table as we're supping with him and then go away more confused than when we come. So mm -hmm. that, that's our intent, my intent. I know, Dr. Bill, it's your intent to remove the veil of confusion and misunderstanding and to get us to be established in our oneness with him so yep. that we can just live our lives and be a, an express image like he was of God's person. And they look at you and say, wow, man, alive. I see, you know, I see Jesus everywhere. What, how in the world did that happen? Well, people are coming into their uh, coming into that revelation. That is really what I'm here for. That's what you're here for. Is that Christ be? Uh, Paul said this: "I travail in birth. Why? Till Christ is formed in you." Amen. Yeah, meaning I'm still going to keep teaching and keep sharing <laughs> until, you see, until you see what I'm sharing, until you understand it. Th then you can quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I want I want to say there's something that I I just about always uh, uh, do uh, without fail, and and that is uh, when I end my classes. Um, uh, and, and I'm talking about in college, when I end my classes, I usually make this statement that just because you've never heard it before doesn't mean it's not true or it's fake. It just simply means you've never heard it before. <laughs> and, 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 and at, because, you know, we're, we are training and let me just say retraining uh, the minds of people all over the world. And so it's important that we grasp truth. And so, you know, I, I just so appreciate uh, all that uh, is being done to spread the gospel. And to do that, we do that by coming into truth. I want to thank everybody for watching today. You are such a blessing. Uh, and Apostle Daniel, thank you for doing these three sessions with me. This has been so powerful. I know that I have you periodically on, on different broadcasts, and I appreciate you so much. Um, and I just encourage you there in Florida, you're doing a lot of stream, uh, uh, streaming, uh, broadcasting, and uh, you've got a group in another state that you're ministering to. And I, I appreciate that, as well as you're reaching people all over the world as well. So uh, I just say this to everybody. You know, we look at simple things like uh, Hebrews uh, 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. But when you take that and you look at that in the Greek language, it means it says this without exercising faith. It is yeah. impossible to fully agree with God. Yes. So to agree with what God's saying, you got to understand God's mind, and then you're able to to research that and convey that. And that's that's all we're trying to do. As He thinks in His heart, so is He. As He is, so are we in this world. And so I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen, as God is, so are you. 
as the Christ is. You may not be daddy, father, the creator, but you are as God's lowercase g. You are equal with Jesus Christ. You are an heir of all that Father has. And so we just so appreciate everybody watching today. And again, Apostle, thank you so much. You're such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate this time. I actually have, I've grown in my re the revelation that I was walking in prior to coming into our discourses that we've had has definitely increased. So um, I take that as a, as a, as just a huge blessing. So I appreciate you and the, and the audience. Um, I appreciate each one of you. The Lord has great things, absolutely extraordinary things that he's going to do in our lives. And all we just have to do is be willing and say, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll take what you've given me and the revelation you've given me and I'll just let it, I'll just let it be seen in my life. And that will make a huge difference wherever you're at. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. You can join us every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for Healed Because God Said So, uh, which we don't teach about healing per se. We're teaching how to change the way you think. You can join me uh, just about every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for Take Another Look. Uh, where we're teaching the book of Revelation verse by verse. We are in the middle of chapter 19 currently. Uh, you can join us every Thursday night for Kingdom Dynamics as we bring on a different guest, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, a minister one-on-one -on -one where we can have conversation. And here's some things sometimes that are different than we're saying, but we're still hearing some things <laughs> that all bring us to the same conclusion. And then every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, uh, for Friday morning conversation. This is our last broadcast for the week, unless Dr. Fay or myself or together we do a random broadcast over the weekend. Otherwise, we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great Saturday and Sunday, and we just declare God's blessing that he has already declared and invoked upon you. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.